Hi everyone. So um, we start our lessons with um, passive components like diets, introduction to diets, uh, capacitors, inductors, and then we go to uh, uh, active components like um, amplifiers and so on. So transistors. So today I'm going to start with diets. So as you know, uh, diets, this is a symbol for a diet. It's basically a one-way street. It can only pass its current in, the, in one direction and nothing can go through uh, to the other direction. This is a symbol for diets. So current can only go from left to right, the conventional current. I will talk about it later. So when you have a diet, basically you can find the diet in your lab kit. It looks like this. The band, the black band that you see is the cathode terminal and the other one is the anode terminal. So the flow of uh, direction of current flow will be from left to right or from anode to cathode. This anode and cathode are made out of semiconductors. Semiconductors are basically insulators that can become conductors when you do some something to them, like uh, adding extra atoms or increasing the temperature, then they can become conductors. So most diets are made from semiconductor materials like silicon, germanium. Actually, you know, Silicon Valley, the name comes from silicon because all these chips and transistors are made of silicon. Silicon itself uh, is coming from sand, uh, as a matter of fact. So it's important to know that diodes are made of semiconductors like silicon. But it's not all one type of silicon. So diode is made of a junction of p-type semiconductor with n-type semiconductor. So you might ask, okay, what is an n-type semiconductor? n-type semiconductor has extra electrons. Okay, what do you mean? It means that I'm doping it by atoms that have extra carriers and electrons. Okay, what is doping? Doping means I'm introducing impurities to a pure semiconductor. For example, I can add, look at this picture. It's very interesting. So you have silicons, right? You have silicons and silicon it by itself has four electrons it, it, in its outer shells. So when you put these silicons together, they make covalent bonding. That looks like this. Then if you put an arsenic, for example, inside, this arsenic make bonding with these silicons. And then this, there is one free electron that doesn't have any atom to bond with and this extra electron is just dangling there. So if you add more arsenic, you'll have basically a bunch of these free electrons that are inside your semiconductor. So this n-type semiconductor have lots of lots of electrons, free electrons moving around and they are not bonding to any atoms like here, like this electron. There are a bunch of them in n-type semiconductor. P-type semiconductor, on the other hand, is different in a way that, for example, you have silicon and all of them are ma making bonding together and it's creating this silicon crystal. Now, let's say you put a boron inside this silicon crystal. This boron has three free electrons in its outer shell, but it doesn't have, it, it's lacking an electron to bond with this silicon here. So basically there is one hole here. 
the absence of electron has the effect of a positive charge. This semiconductor is called p-type. Okay, so you have, if you connect a p-type semiconductor with n-type semiconductor, you create a diet. That's all you have to know. And the n-type semiconductor has extra electrons moving around, and the p-type semiconductor has a lack of electrons. That means it has some holes here that can accept electrons, like this picture. I can, if I put an electron here, it will make a bonding between these two atoms. That's all you have to know. So again, in summary, this is a diet. It's a one-way street. The analogy would be it's a one-way street. There are two parts. One terminal is called anode. One terminal is called cathode. And if you look at a diet, when you see this uh, black line, that's the cathode. The other side is anode. Why? Because basically it's like two parts, n-type semiconductor, p-type semiconductor. For n-type semiconductor, you have extra electrons. And for p-type semiconductor, you have holes. Basically, you have atoms that can accept electrons. 